Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was John Benet Ramsey. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, which you can see right here. And yep, here you do your stupid animations. I'm and here goes giving up at this point. The hot dog, Mrs. Hot Dog, she's living it up without her husband flying right by on a pickle boat. Oh wait, she doesn't know he's alive. She still. doesn't know he's alive. He's gonna come back yeah. like Michael look at, Myers. Look at how happy she is. She doesn't know. I hate that I actually am invested in this story yeah, it's now. It's pretty rich and compelling. It's fucking stupid. It's like blood simple for hot dogs. For hot dogs. Starting it off with a soft ball. This one's from Jenna Farley on Facebook. She says, please discuss in your Q&A your thoughts on the theory that Jean Benet Ramsey actually being Katy Perry. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, she looks like her. That's pretty much all there is to all that theory. Got. All you got. Also, there's that little fact that, you know, Jean Benet Ramsey was born six years before Katy Perry, but you know, details. Be a hell of a success story. Why would you fake? a horrible strangulation and beating just, just so you could write I kissed a girl in 2008. Right. If they truly wanted to fake her, like stop her modeling career, just stop dressing her up like a little show pony. Chloe Zeldin says, why is Shane cooler than me? He's not. Nope. So good on ya. This is gonna be the longest question we've ever answered, I think. This comes from Maya Angelique Henry. Uh, and by the way, this is a question that a lot of you had, why we didn't address this. So here it is. When I first heard of this case, I researched it for days. I believe that Burke is the killer of John Bonet, and his parents helped him to cover the murder to avoid punishment. Here's my evidence. John Bonet had been found upon an autopsy to have undigested pineapple in her system. Despite the fact that the Ramseys did not recall serving John Bonet the fruit, a bowl of pineapple with a spoon in it was found on the kitchen table beside a tall glass. Upon further inspection, the bowl of pineapple had the fingerprints of Patsy and Burke Ramsey on it and the glass had Burke's fingerprints. Burke had a violent past with his sister and had often gotten into fights with her. I believe that Burke was eating said pineapple on the night of the murder. John Bonet then stole some from the bowl. Burke got angry and in turn hit her over the head with a flashlight. This action coincided with the bludgeoning. Burke then sought out his mother who wrote the note, hence the ransom being so close to the father's bonus, and the fact that the evidence shows it was written in the house. I think then, John had strangled John Bonet to make the murder seem orchestrated by a kidnapper and moved her into the basement. Burke also showed weird behavior in this interview. Note the smiling and faint laughter, a blatant brush off of the theory, the type of behavior I don't think a brother would have during an interview about his supposedly murdered sister. This is just my idea, we could all be wrong. Wow. That's a lot. Lots to unpack there. Oh um, boy. First off, let me just say what people think. They think it's one of these two because they had the fingerprints there. Uh, there had been rumors that John Bonet was a bedwetter, so maybe uh, Patsy Ramsey got upset, like frustrated, whacked her over the head. Burke got angry that she took his favorite snack, which is pineapple, whacked yeah. her over the head. The, the thing that doesn't make sense to me is evidence shows she was strangled while she was alive. And not only does it show that she was strangled while she was alive, it kind of shows that she may have been fighting. That to me suggests an intruder and abduction more than yeah. an accident. So the part of that theory then where they fake strangle her after she's already... Yeah, so that doesn't make any sense because she was alive. Also, some people think that maybe she got hit in the head so hard that she was like, I don't know, out of it to the point where they, sh they wanted to just finish it off. Okay. Well, we're back to the part where I'm bummed out and don't want to talk about that. Yeah, and that interview he had with Dr. Phil. It's weird. Which, which admittedly, you watched and were like, this guy's a weirdo. Mm -hmm. um, he looks nervous. Yeah. He looks nervous. <laughs> You're being accused on national media of murdering your sister. And I give people pineapple all the time. I don't always remember it. Here's from Bruva Cavalcanti. Cavalcanti. Here's from Bruna. If it wasn't the family, I would bet that it was someone close to them who never got to be classified as a suspect, or at least someone close to her father, since the only way to know the amount of money that the father earned would be A, it was the mom or dad, or B, it was someone who knew how much the guy got. Unless it was a coincidence, but it's too spot on to be only random numbers. Love you guys, and P.S. Shane is going to kill someone at some point, and I won't be surprised. Jesus Christ, yeah, I guess I wouldn't be surprised either. What are you talking, you're more likely to do that, I think. I don't think so. Yeah, because the way your eyes glaze over sometimes, yeah. and then there's nothing there. There's nothing. I'm not, I'm not a murderer. Obviously it had to be someone close to the family. 
Um, yeah, I, I don't know how they would know that number, or it really is the biggest coincidence of all time. But you know, there's probably a lot of people close to the family. If they're pageant people, they probably know a lot of weirdos. The next question we have is from Andrea Chavez. This is another long one, so it's just an episode of long ones. It's a long ones. In crime scene photos, there was only snow in the front of the house, not in the back where the entry to the basement was located, so it's possible an intruder could have entered without leaving footprints. Oh. Police also claimed the basement window was too small, but a police detective named Lou Smith proved in a video how easy it was to gain access through the basement. He even showed that in order to climb back out, all that was needed was something to step on. In crime scene photos, a suitcase was propped right underneath the open window, where the intruder would have escaped from. Lastly, the Ramseys had a Christmas party prior, where they invited many people and gave them a tour of the house. Is it possible that the killer came to the party, learned the layout of the house, like John Bonet's bedroom, grabbed some of the stationery, and went home to draft the ransom note? Did I touch on the, the spider web? You, I don't think you talked about the spider web. So there was a spider web in the basement window, the open one, that was undisturbed, and people posited that it's impossible to get through there without disturbing said spider web. You know, it was just some guy who was like, no way. Yeah, no. no way anyone crawls through that and doesn't mess up that web. Yeah. No, no, no way. No, no way they get no. past that fucking web. No way. Why is this guy in Brooklyn? He is, he's the guy from Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm in Colorado. I'm yeah. in Colorado, and nobody's getting past that fucking spider no web. No fucking way anyone's getting past no that way. web. No fucking way. <laughs> They just bring that guy throughout different facets of the case. Every time they have like an answer or a question, they no just point to him. No fucking way. No fucking way. No, get out of here with that. Get out of here, get out of here, fucking, fucking bullshit. <laughs> uh, here's one from Jackson Foote. If you were both lead detectives on this investigation, what would you do first and why? If I were a lead detective on this, I'd probably quit right away and go take a vacation in Myrtle Beach or something. I, I think the first thing I would do is make sure no one disturbs the crime scene which was not done here. If you ever come across a crime scene, do not touch it. I, I don't, just don't touch them if they look half past dead because it's a crime scene. Half past dead? Yeah, like well done. Steven Seagal. Is that, is that, a, is that actually? You look a, half past dead. That sounded like uh, Dumbledore. It didn't sound like Steven Seagal. Harry. Don't disturb the crime scene, Harry. We found pineapple in Harry Potter's stomach. <laughs> No. <laughs> Last question. Let's we play. already have one from this person. Are you double dipping on this no, one person? Yeah, we do. Is this our first double dip? Yeah, did you mean to do that? I didn't. Well, remarkable commenting then, I yeah, guess, yeah, from I guess. Chloe she, Zeldin. Chloe Zeldin, again, coming in hot. Uh, you should make a spinoff where you guys teach Morse code. That would be a good spinoff if I knew Morse code. Yeah, I think there were people trying to decode what you said. Yeah, I, I, I made a joke at the end of the last episode where I said I would say who the killer was in Morse code. Well, now blink to you in Morse code who I think did it. You don't know Morse code. He doesn't know Morse code. And unfortunately, some people actually decoded it. I heard that it was just like- deep. Numerous people wasted <laughs> Time I that they'll some, never get back. That's, some, those are seconds of your life that you spent <laughs> on nothing. Someone was drawing out the actual blips and bloops on the little paper, and I was like, oh, good lord. It feels like it should be a crime to steal time from people. You're like stealing people's lives. I thought it was pretty obvious I was joking. Well, everyone who knows Morse code knows who I thought did it. What do we got this week, Ryan? Oh, shit. This week, this week is a whopper. Oh. This week is a case that's arguably more famous than the last case. More famous than Jean Benet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you could say it's the most famous hide and seek champion of all time. Well, that's exciting. That does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the episode on Friday and then send your questions into the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, which you see right here. And now let's take another visit into the hot dog saga. Here he comes. He is going after his wife and he's being carried by a seagull across the ocean to chase her on her pickle boat. Isn't that weird? Wait, what the f Wait, well, Cole, there's so much new information you just yeah. put in there. Next week, the thrilling conclusion of the hot dog quadrilogy. That's not a thing. Yeah, it is a quadrilogy. That's not. People say that. No one says that. You know, when you sip tea after saying things, it doesn't mean what you've said is factual. It just makes you look like a jackass when it's, in fact, not factual. Like, Oh, I just, look, I'm not saying I'm right about everything. I just... Feel like I often am right about a lot of things. Okay. I don't think pickles float either. 
it. So <clears throat> throw a pickle in a pond, you'll see. You throw a pickle in a pond. You throw a pickle weirdo. in a pond. It's weird that you spend a lot of time doing that. Oh yeah, it's so weird that I throw pickles in ponds in my free time.